Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin. It's good to see you. Thank you very much for coming back. It's glad to actually have you here. Um, this is another vloggy kind of video because something has happened this morning on my channel, and um, I'm part of the adpocalypse now. I've actually been affected by the changes that have been appearing on YouTube. I've noticed it with the revenue dropping for a little while, but this morning I woke up to a number of my videos on my channel, as you can see here, with the um, monetization affected by not fitting into advertiser friendly context. Now, I don't, I'm not gonna assume that people know what the adpocalypse actually is on YouTube, so I thought I'd give a quick explanation of what's really going on. But before I do that, I have to actually say the music that's playing underneath this is from ocremix.org. You can check out their soundtracks there. This is their uh, Night's Lucid Dreaming album. So I just thought it would be a decent bedding track to actually have underneath this while we talk about this topic. Because I, it's less of a dream and more of a nightmare that's happening right now at the moment because after having a really big spike and hitting a, hitting a goal and then hitting another really cool goal where I passed 500 subscribers and then I went from 500 to 600 in a month, um, I was really excited and thought, right, this is the, this, I'm actually, I'm, maybe people are really enjoying this and I'm, I was watching numbers go up and went like, right, okay, maybe this is actually the time to really start focusing on this and make sure that uh, all the time I spent before now has finally made it worthwhile. But with one fell swoop, uh, revenue is dropped by about 50% as it is on the channel. And uh, that's, <laughs> that, 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 that's quite heavy, for, even for like being a, such a small channel as it is. Now, like I said, I'll explain what basically happened with the Adpocalypse. The Adpocalypse is a change in the, the way that YouTube is actually doing advertising on channels. Now, not every channel uses monetization. I do use monetization because I, I don't really have many other ways to kind of reach out to the small amount of people that do check out my stuff. And whenever people do show up, uh, advertising revenue immediately increases rather than actually be in a situation where I might have to um, encourage people to actually be there and uh, to join me every single time rather than actually me doing constant uh, call outs for people to join Patreons or to subscribe or to check me out or to donate in any way shape or form, I tended to let the ad revenue deal with it for me. Now what happened was uh, back in February of this year, the YouTube made a small change, or not even a small change, they made a change that was uh, towards letting their advertisers control they where their ads get shown more often on YouTube. This was because of a series of issues with a number of YouTubers and different things happening in different places. Uh, people pointed out that it was being PewDiePie making uh, per jokes about uh, Jews and Nazis, or it might be Drama Alert where it was actually attacking somebody. I'm not doing this to call out individuals that may have caused this problem, but uh, over a period of time, a number of channels and a number of situations led advertisers who previously had been hands off completely with the advertising on YouTube to start looking into who and what was being said right after their ads were playing, which can be very, very serious because most ads do trend on the fact of positive reinforcement and positive uh, mental association with objects. Uh, I personally don't think I'm majorly affected by that kind of advertising. I tend to actually like, go for things that I actually do find personally interesting to me and I want. But uh, there's a lot of people who actually are affected by that and the studies and tests have actually like, shown that to be true for many, many years. So essentially what happened was that um, what previously was being done was YouTube would actually gather entire sectors of communities like uh, people between a certain age of demographics, say, say the 18 to 35 demographic and males or people who watch gaming or people who watch comedy or people who watch fashion and then selling those verticals, those like uh, entire sections of the community to advertisers as a whole. And that way that allowed them to uh, monetize a group of people that they weren't directly monitoring but kind of all had enough things in common that they would be uh, uh, appealing to an advertiser. Now, the problem is that now that there is a lot of like public kind of like, there's a lot of places where advertisers are aware of what YouTube is doing. They're now putting their hands back in and actually going like, right, we need to start applying a bit of pressure to make sure that the things that we want to be said are not the things we want to be said, but the things that we don't, the things we don't want to be associated with us are no longer associated with us. And this has actually kind of been illustrated by some of the controls that advertisers have actually been given in their recent, uh, in recent times. They, a case of like, uh, Ethan Klein here actually posted up what new options are of advertisers that are resulting in most of us not having ads. Uh, you can see the sensitive subject exclusions where they actually want, if topics are being made about X, Y, or Z, this is actually like the blanket statements for over the top and things they don't want to actually be included. And that's, that's, perfectly fine that's what advertisers have the right to do that's why they're actually like they're advertising on a platform they need to have 
things that they want associated with their things. And what I'm going to do is actually just switch across the screen here so you can guys can check out uh, this list a little bit better. Let me just pull it up on screen. Uh, <laughs> it would help if I'd actually prepared a little bit better for doing this. Uh, sorry, I'm good. Like, like this was a blog that kind of was meant to kind of just talk about it a little bit, but I want to get into it properly so that everybody can understand what the situation is and how do we move forward from here after the after the ad apocalypse being uh, a serious problem. Let me just do this and pull you back a little bit. Um, ba -ba -ba. D -d -d. and put you over the top. <laughs> so the problem is I'm actually having to actively change uh, a few things here while I'm doing this. So uh, that, uh, that, there we go. Uh, boom. Now you guys can actually see the full list on screen. Uh, tragedy and conflict, sensitive social issues, sexually aggressive content, sensational and shocking and profanity and rough language, all applied in, and you can see the ones that have been added lately, betas. So this was uh, a while back, uh, back in April, and obviously this this net has been widened quite a lot since uh, the beta has been applied in for people to use, and it's moved a lot of YouTubers off of uh, the advertising platforms that were there and have made people kind of shift towards a a different way of monetizing their so, uh, monetizing their content, which is essentially diversifying what we need to do as a, a agile single creators on the web. The biggest problem that I had with it was that I started thinking about why is it actually happening now, uh, especially with uh, the end of the summer. We're, we're reaching that end point for a lot of Western audiences and stuff that we're actually, like people are going back to school, the, kid, the, red, the views are going to drop again, the attention is going to drop, and therefore we're all kind of like tensing up a little bit because all of those views, all those kids and all those young people are no longer going to be there to watch our content. And that means that we're going to have a drop in views and an even greater drop in revenue over time. And I thought, in my head, I had this theory that it was actually being caused by uh, the need for... <laughs> for throwing his face up on there. Uh, the need for a drop, in, a drop in costs to YouTube because for many years, YouTube has actually been run at a loss in a lot of ways. It's, a, it's not been the most profitable part of Google. And maybe by removing a lot of us creators that are actually the smaller ones who are using maybe more bandwidth than using more uh, space over time and reducing us down so that we don't eke out the profits that they would gain from the larger YouTubers, that they might be saving themselves a little bit of cash. Now, obviously, this, I, I, this if you have an idea that this is completely wrong, I've been mulling about with it for the, most of the morning and I've kind of came to the realization that that doesn't work for them either because the hosting cost is always going to be high. To Looking into a self-hosting solution for uh, individual creator and if you actually were an individual creator with any kind of uh, large audience it becomes untenable where how you're going to store all that work and how all those videos uh, large large companies that are actually to the point where they've been running for a decade or so have really good brand deals have their own kind of things set up like the rooster teeth guys diversified to hell <laughs> they, they, they've they're well covered for the hosting their own content and keeping it separate away from uh, other platforms and their requirements and other advertisers requirements in fact uh, one of the favorite ones i actually ever saw was whenever the Penny Arcade guys raised enough cash that they literally just went like, we're not going to run advertising on for anything other than us anymore on the page because you guys were willing to give us this much to get started and get ourselves set up. And that one, that worked really well for them. Again, they were uh, burgeoning on the early days of the, the the creative web where they actually had the opportunity to be able to do so. They, they, they struck while the arm was hot and early. I Meanwhile, a lot of us are kind of like still sitting here while it's starting to cool down quite a bit. Um, the, the biggest thing I actually thought would be uh, I'm trying to think of what ways I actually need to bring up. Um, I, I've been talking about it earlier on today. I posted up about it on the Facebook page for Passage of Skin and on my personal page and mentioned it on Twitter. And a few people have actually gone back to me kind of like uh, talking about um, alternatives, things that we can do that actually uh, would resolve the issue, especially for me. So, and um, obviously the first thing to do is finding another platform. Something like uh, Vidme allows you to actually have your own videos posted up again. It, it looks and feels like a very early days YouTube and actually has uh, support for creators directly where you can actually subscribe to a channel for a, a certain amount every month. And that's, it, it essentially kind of it crosses over what would be our other solution and also a new platform where all of this content can be put up on. Uh, I've already been using Vidme for a period of time. I've been posting up, old, not older videos, but uh, always with a, a time shift. So stuff goes on YouTube 
before it's on VidMe, and then over time VidMe releases them, unless it's absolutely time sensitive information that I need to post up in time for certain things like uh, Humble Bundles or for betas and access to betas that actually need to be shown to people as much as possible. Uh, the other option obviously is Patreon as well, which a lot of people have used very successfully. Um, I've had a Patreon open for about a year now, and um, as you can see, one one patron. <laughs> and uh, Adam, you know you're out there. Thank you very much for being my one patron. We've had conversations. I know what I, I know what you like, and we keep on trying to make it here on the channel. But um, yeah, thankfully I have one patron who's not my mother, which is really a good sign. Uh, but obviously, I haven't been talking about it as much in the past because I thought that I was going to I was going to keep on trying to build the audience that I have here already before even turn the try taking the cap off and like. <laughs> Taking the cap off and just going, guys, pass us a buck. You, know, you just please somebody. But the um, it hasn't it hasn't come out that way in the end up. The I, I can't I can't think of what else to really say other than this has just been really unpleasant uh, of a day to actually go uh, like to try and figure out what I'm going to do next. Uh, I've put a lot of time into putting the content together that. You guys watch on YouTube, and I know I'm I'm not a, nowhere near a big YouTuber. I'm not somebody who actually has a massive audience. I've barely like most of the time people are actually like watching my videos because they might find one through somebody else that was related to something else that's not even related to the stuff I make anymore. Like things like the uh, the old movies I made, like Video Vampires and the episodes of Beyond Juice, or the the video diaries we did whenever we we're making those. Or it could be the the one or two fan dubs I did in the past that are still getting attention, and then people kind of like filter in from those. Uh, it makes me really uncomfortable to know that I, all the stuff that I make now could literally be worthless, and it's a really upsetting feeling to be kind of be told that it is worthless to certain people. And I think it's not really because I, I don't think I think probably the the one thing that's actually affected my videos is rude language. And I don't, I, I mean, that that's about the same as having the mature content symbol on your videos. It's like, I, I'll put it on for the videos for the purposes of actually like, if, the, if there is a lot of language rather than a few words that are no longer on the, like the unbroadcastable list. Instead, it's actually uh, videos like, I'm trying to think of what it was in the most recent batch of videos that triggered this in any way, shape or form. But as you look through the scan of uh, videos that I have that are actually now no longer monetizable or uh, non-ad friendly, some of these are literal videos that I've uploaded and haven't been given their titles, tags and names yet. So they're getting blanketed in with videos that actually have been around for a while. I mean, essentially you can see stuff that, I can imagine stuff like Dead or Alive being sexually provocative content. Okay, can understand. Even though it doesn't break any rules on the content, all it, it, it's volleyball. Like beach volleyball doesn't get banned on YouTube, or it doesn't get monetization taken away from it. You, you're not going to chase after uh, the clips from Sky Sports that might be covering a volleyball game, yeah, or ladies volleyball. I mean, that's that's what the purpose of it is. Uh, cheesecake and games has been around for so long, but obviously now because advertisers might be afraid of what we might say about it or imply it by showing it on screen, then they don't want to actually be associated with it. Um, the, the list of videos just goes on and on that I've actually been affected by. That, that's like page after page of videos from my channel. And it goes back, in fact, I'm going to essentially find how far back my, like, I, the videos affected go back as far as 2014, 2015. So it's not, it's not like it's just recent content that's being scanned. It is the entire back catalog of channels that are being heavily affected by this. And you can see that it actually is affecting everything from our daily views to how much people are watching at the time. Because with all, without the advertiser uh, links to it, what incentive does YouTube have to actually push smaller YouTubers up? Because they, they're not making any profit from us in there. We're, we're literally, all we're doing is the more views and the more bandwidth that's used by us, we're not going to be able to um, sustain as creators because we're, we're literally going to be just dragging the people down that are actually... Uh, so they are hosting our material, and they—they're they, why would they ever want to actually encourage more people to be making stuff that's not going to make them money? That's that's what the, the, the it's just it, it's a cycle and a robber that's going to eat itself and make things worse and make things worse for people who don't already have millions of subscribers, and for the people who even have the five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand people, and a hundred of those people are willing to give a fucking uh, give five dollars to actually like support them to keep creating for. Uh, ad infinitum and actually enjoy their content those that that's not going to solve the problem all it's going to do is shift the responsibility onto the creator 
who then is going to have to try and find more diverse ways to actually support themselves while YouTube themselves are not going to actually share those videos and the audience isn't going to grow natively within its own system. It may be the way Vidme has actually been doing it lately where they actually have a lot of encouraged kind of like community and conversations and admittedly it's a lot of content that is actually coming from very large creators that have get a lot of focus on them. Maybe that's where we're going to go next. I mean, that's the most prevalent and most well-known alternate platform that we could all move to. But again, where's the support? They, they don't have advertising. They have, well, they are going to be rolling out beta advertising soon. So we're, I'm curious to see how Vidme are going to resolve the problem that YouTube has now ran into now that the, like, the box is already open. Pandora's box has been opened. Like, advertisers are going to always have their point to be made. Unless they're going to go the, the other route and just go like, all right, oh, we're going to have all the violence and all the sex and all the fringe stuff and we'll just have porn advertised on your videos. Like, is that what they're going to do? Are we, are we going to have to turn to a red tube kind of thing where so everything's surrounded by porn and then you might be watching a video about it with a 14 year old playing a video game? Is that is that what the balance is going to be? Or are we going to have to actually like start putting gating on the communities that we're actually be putting the content onto? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a clusterfuck. That's what this actually ends up being. It's just a major clusterfuck that isn't i just realized like me even saying that me saying those words is now going to make this video unmonetizable and therefore nobody's going to be able to see it it, it just it boggles my mind and it makes me really unhappy but you make do and you change with the world that's around you uh I, i'm floating about four or five ideas about what i can do to keep uh, keep this growing and I'm going to keep making content. I'm not going to let this make me quit. I'm not going to quit making stuff for YouTube. I'll keep making stuff for YouTube. I'll repost it on Vidme. I, I'm more like I've already been trying to start towards creating stuff specifically for the Patreon and this has been a major kick in the ass. I'm uh, No matter what, uh, the Patreon is going to have so much more content now. Uh, it's encouraged me back to writing, so I'm going to start writing more article content because I'll be posting that onto the main website, which none of you guys generally actually know about because literally all it is now is just a link dump of all the stuff from YouTube. Uh, Pastiche of Life has been around for a long time and hasn't actually been really updated properly. It's time to sit down and focus and try and make something different out of it. Uh, there have been a bunch of other ideas being floating with other people that have been interesting to work on. So maybe, maybe Pastiche of Skin is not dead. I don't want it to be. I don't want. I've I've put a lot of effort into the last year and a half of this, and I like the way it's. I like the fact it's grown. It hasn't grown like. It hasn't grown as if I've been following trends and jumping on a bandwagon to talk about those things constantly. I know that's. I, people just say that that's the way you should be playing. It's a it's a hit and run thing. You know you have to you have to aim. You have to aim and like hit the things that are really important. But I'm going like, I don't know, man. There's a place for creating content that you find interesting and other people in a much smaller group find interesting you don't need to aim for the 14 million subscribers i don't want i don't i, I personally i'd be scared out of my goddamn mind if it got like that i'd rather just keep creating and be able to support myself while making the videos and youtube are not uh, not helping me in that way anymore so it might be time to actually look of look other in other fields properly and I think uh, this is my advice to anybody else who's in around about the same level of subscribership and uh, uh, viewership as I am. Look elsewhere because this is a... Like, don't get into art or creation to get rich. Try to actually cover your costs and survive is probably the most important thing. And YouTube, uh, as well west as it was before all of this was happening, wherever people could say what they want, do what they wanted, and there was no pressure from advertisers or the money people, then now that's what the problem is. I, maybe maybe YouTube wants to be an advertising platform for advertisers, where you, they have an advertisement and advertisers put, to look, put their advertisements on the sides of other advertisements, so you can have this kind of like uh, Voltron of advertising in one single ball, so that they, people can actually get hit by three ads, an ad before, an ad, an ad they choose to watch, and then an ad afterwards. Maybe that's what they need to do uh, to keep themselves afloat, but that's not what's going to keep us as individuals afloat and that's not going to really work in the future um i want to say thank you very much for listening to me ramble on for a bit of time i, I, can't even, I don't even know how long i've been talking about 20 minutes um this is going to feel like just another episode of pastiche of skin normally as i put up for games but it's just specifically i want to talk to you guys and say thank you very much to anybody who sticks around who watches the material i need your help i actually do need your help um 
because of the lack of monetization from the videos, it the, there's no incentive, like I said, for YouTube to put these up in the rankings. So I need you guys to talk about it, engage with me, like ask me questions about this because I'm really I really want to discuss it more. I really want to find more information because I still don't know what the mechanics of their automated system is. So I just tell me more so I can tell other people. Um, follow me on Twitter, do the YouTube things on Facebook and subscribe. If you please do check me out on VidMe if you like what you see here. It's the exact same channel, just uh, it'll be much more concurrent now. But they, you have the option to support me there or on patreon.com forward slash pastiche of skin. Uh, you can look for me there as well. It's going to get very, very busy, I hope, with a lot more content very, very soon because I'm literally going to have to start getting uh, what I'm doing for YouTube and then just put it there for anybody who's willing to get it early. But that, that's the most be that's the most simplest thing I can do, and that's for self-preservation. Because I always make the content early enough that I'm always scheduled in the head anyway. So it's literally a matter of like make more and then place it so that the queue continues on. So like this block's always gonna be on YouTube anyway. Kind of like the way Rooster Teeth do with their first thing. You know, they, you wanna see it there first, you wanna see it as early as you possibly can, you can check it out there. So um, yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm sorry for rambling on. I kinda had a point and then I got lost there in the middle. But this is unbelievably frustrating. Uh, help me out. Help other you, small YouTubers out. Go and check out the guys that you haven't seen in a while that you really like the material of and see how they're doing because we're all kind of hurting a little bit. This has been a very recent thing. So support each other. Support the people you like. And uh, please support me. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. It, I've already said all the things I'm going to need to say. I don't need to do the extra ramble at the end about subscriptions and videos. Um, obviously, this is going to be on YouTube. Videos popping up on the other side. These will be relevant to the things that are actually already, that might, might that are no longer monetized, but you can still check them out because they might be someone that's interesting to you. I want to say thank you very much, and I hope to see you all very soon again. And we'll see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.